Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really good. I know I haven't posted a video in about eight months, and for that, I am truly sorry. Today, I'm working on an iPhone XR that was sent here for no image. This was actually sent here by one of our really good repair shop customers, so I don't expect there to be any shenanigans going on in here. Let's have a look and see. iPhone is taking a normal charge, however, does not display image with a new screen. We think it might be a backlight issue, no signs of water damage. Sounds pretty straightforward. So looking inside this phone, everything looks to be pretty well normal. Let's see what we do get for charging current. So for charging current, we're going to pull 950 big ones. We're pretty well getting a full amp of charging current. Okay, so it is starting to look more like no image. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect their battery and I'm going to hook up my power supply. There we go. So we have the power supply set to four volts at 3.2 amps, and I'm gonna turn the power supply on. 0 0.01, that is a good sign. What I'm looking here is just to see if we get any crazy amounts of load whenever we prompt it to boot. I'm just really trying to verify that this is a no image problem before I proceed troubleshooting a no image issue. So we're gonna go ahead and press the button to boot, and one, two, three, boots. We are drawing 80 milliamps of current, 160 milliamps of current, and we have dropped back to 100 milliamps of current. That is not a normal boot sequence. This phone just came up to 100 milliamps and stalled. Not a no image issue. Next, what we're going to do here is get this thing powered up to the point where it's drawing 100 milliamps of current here, which I'm starting to think that this thing's probably in DFU mode. And now we're going to hook up a cable to my desktop and see if we get any sound we do not but you know what else is also not happening up in the top right hand corner of your screen let's see right there you can see that this thing is drawing right now it's drawing 100 milliamps of current and that is with this charger connected this thing may actually have a charging issue and not a no image issue so with the phone operating off the battery rail we're drawing 100 milliamps of current while at the same time, we're actually drawing zero amps of charging current from the USB. All right, so now we have the board out of this thing. We're going to be trying to peel our little sticker thing off the back here while keeping the adhesive on the sticker itself and not stuck to the board. Now, on the iPhone XR, the most common point for charging failure is a little IC down here that is responsible for all sorts of things. So in my opinion, the hardest thing about working on this board is removing this bottom shield. The alloy that has been used to solder this bottom shield on here is just absolutely ridiculously difficult to melt. And by the time you get this to float to the point where the shield will lift off of here, other components under here that are vital for this phone's functionality come very, very close to getting floated. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of this little sticker here. And since we got to get this board extremely hot, we're going to go ahead and remove the other sticker here as well. Now this has absolutely, positively, beyond a shadow of a doubt, got to be my least favorite part of this entire repair. And that is taking this shield off of here. This bottom shield is just unreasonably difficult to remove. And I like to start with adding some flux and then everywhere I can get to after we get this fluxed up, we're going to be flooding with low melt. And I know this is going to make a bit of a crummy mess, but I will clean it up the best that I can. We're just trying to make sure the low melt is going to flood into everywhere that it needs to flood. I'm thinking that this one is most likely going to be... A Yangtze, Yahtze, Yangtze, what, what, whatever they change the name of that IC to, that's probably going to be what's failing on this one. Just flood the heck out of this with low melt. So I'm actually just dipping my iron over here in this little bit of uh, low melt solder paste that I have. And then I'm just carefully going along the edge of this board. 
and flooding that stuff in here with leaded. And we're creating an alloy here that melts really, really easy. And if we don't do this when removing the shield, there are just, there are so many things that can go wrong and we can turn a repair that is really straightforward into a complete total nightmare if we heat this all up too hot while removing this shield. Okay, let's see if I might be able to get some of that down in there in this corner. I had just got done telling Paul Daniels, from now on, I will be cutting the iPhone XRs. But in all my years of doing this, I am just not comfortable with mutilating these boards. So let's just say one more. I'm going to do one more here the hard way, the nerve-wracking way. Because it really is nerve-wracking. I mean, you get this thing just a little bit too hot, and all of a sudden your little one-hour job just turn into a two- to three-hour job. Yeah. Next, we're gonna get this thing put into a board holder and try to hold it down. Let's just go ahead and clamp it right over here. There we go. Now for hot air, I'm gonna be going with my big nozzle. Now I normally run with a six millimeter nozzle for removing this shield. We're gonna go with the larger one. So I've got my hot air set on 430 degrees C with an airflow of 40. All right, so let's go ahead and start warming this thing up. Now the key here is to get this thing hot and lift it off of here without causing a whole bunch of ball squeezage. It's coming loose out of my board holder. I'm pulling up on it actually pretty stinking hard. Okay, I see the alloy starting to melt. Come on, baby. I think we're in a bind. We're trying to stay as far away from baseband as we can with all this heat. All right, now that we got the shield off of this thing, the first thing that I do right off the smack here is get right in and have a look at the baseband CPU. And we wanna make sure that we have not caused any ball squeezage. And as you can see, we did cause the tiniest, faintest little, teeny, teeny, tiny, little bitty, tiniest little hint of ball squeezage. I can barely even focus on it right here. 
we cause this little bit of solder to squeeze out. We're not actually squeezing any balls here. We liquefy the solder beneath this epoxy and it swells, it pushes out and it has nowhere else to go. So it squeezes out and naturally uh, because of nature, it forms a ball. So everything here looks good. Now down toward the bottom of the board here is the ship that I believe is going to be at fault. This is a chip manufactured by Texas Instruments. And I believe that is the reason why this phone is not turning on. So we're going to set our hot air. We're actually going to leave it at 430C, airflow of 40. All right, we are running with a 6 millimeter nozzle now. We're going to add a little bit of flux to this. Warm this sucker up. We're going to pop this chip right off of here and install a brand spanking new one. Oh, I almost forgot to mark pin 1. All right, so pin 1, the dot on the chip, is up here. So I'm just going to add a little scratch to the board there. That lets me know where pin one is. Now to be sure I get this only as hot as needed, I'm going to sort of just kind of lift the whole entire board up by the chip like that. And then as soon as it gets hot enough, the board falls out from under it just like that. Now with this board still hot, we're gonna add some flux and smooth out all these pads. Now I am embarrassed to say that my 0.1 millimeter tip, I actually have a pile of them that are bad and I have a new one on the way. I've let myself get screwed up and don't have the proper tip for this, but this one works pretty good. All right, let's add a little more flux because I don't like how that's uh, how that's smoothing out. It's not all that great. Okay, looks good. So here we have a brand spanking new IC. Just going to go ahead and get it out of the package here. You know things have gotten to be really small when you have to use a microscope to unbox them. So we can see our new IC has beautiful symmetrical balls. They're most likely lead free but that'll be okay. We've already had to heat this board up to the temperature of the surface of the sun so we can deal with some lead free solder. Add a little bit of flux here. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, why is it? Every time I go to record a video, I blow the chip all the way off the bench. All right, we're just going to go ahead and warm this up here until the flux starts to bubble. Then we can let it go and it'll stick really good. That's one reason why I really like my chip quick flux. This is ChipQuick SMD291 Flux. All of the tools I use are linked in the description below. I apologize, I haven't updated them in a long time, but uh, I'll get to that as soon as I can. All right, let's warm this right on up and let the chip fall down into place, and then we'll give it just a little bit of a nudge. Okay, that chip is on there. All right, fellers, we have a new chip on this board. Next, we're going to see what happens when we try to power it up. Let's slip it back into a housing here, see if our symptoms are any different. Now for this test, we're going to hook up our dock flex. I'm actually gonna go ahead and hook up a known good screen assembly because I don't wanna deal with uh, not knowing whether or not that screen is good. Uh, so we're gonna hook up our screen assembly here. I'm gonna hook up their power button, the customer's battery, I really should try this from a DC power supply first, but come on, who wants to be safe? All right, we're gonna go ahead and connect a charger. Now with that charger connected, right off the bat here, we can see we are drawing 100 milliamps of charging current. We are drawing one amp of charging current, and this phone is booting. So this thing was actually drawing proper charging current for the customer, but once it would begin its boot, it would get to where it would draw 100 milliamps from the battery rail install. 
it was most likely in DFU mode, but since that little chip that we just changed, which, uh, by the way, that's it right there. So since this little chip was bad, it made them think that it had no image. Uh, but as you can see now, we have this phone back up and running, and we have working image. It's a little um, dim right now because I don't have the front facing. It's a little bit dim right now because I don't have the front facing flex cable connected. From here, I'm going to get the shield put back on this and clean the bottom end of the PCB. I don't know if I'm going to do that on camera or not. To put this shield back on, I'm actually going to clean up the pads that are on the board. And then for the most part, I'm soldering this back on with an iron. I'm not actually going to do this with hot air. So um, that is going to be it for this one, guys. I'm going to get this finished up and another happy customer. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Have a good day. All right, I'm very glad to say that this phone is, hang on, can't let you see what's on the screen. This phone is back up and running. We have image, we have working touch, and this is going to be a happy customer. Guys, I really appreciate you following along, and um, I will see you in the next one. Have a good day.